I'm going to give away literally my exact 350K roadmap from my starting from scratch phase to where I'm at now. And then what I would even do to improve on that to get to where I'm at faster. Um, if I could talk to the me three years ago, which is who I really think my avatar is. So if I had to start all over, that's what I would do. Not everybody even looks at the 350K and says, I need that. So you're going to be able to just pick your area in the timeline and stop where you want. But um, the whole point is that it's all going to be in one place. So who the call is for, it's literally the me three years ago. That's why I've decided my whole like mantra and brand is going to be around. I remember what it felt like when I was like 19, turning 20, not knowing where to go for this credit information, not even knowing credit was as important as it is. And I want to be that personal brand that is basically what I wish I would have found when I was that age, when I was first starting, because it's like, literally, it feels like TV static in your head when you're trying to go around and figure out who I should listen to, who's got information, who's just, you know, misleading to market and all that stuff. So my goal by the end of this call is to get you an overarching view on a credit game plan for yourself from A to Z. And then if you're not at level A, if you're not starting from scratch, or if you're negative, we don't even have a letter for you because you still need repair and stuff. I'm going to be explaining that as well, that there's still hope for you and there's still things you can be doing. Plenty of things. Um, and that's actually a little spoiler alert. If anyone wants to put it on their calendar, January 7th, going into 2024, we're going to have another free class. That will be for people more focused on the repair side. It's going to be called How to Rebuild Your Credit Without Repair because there's a ton of stuff you can do. You guys will get little glimpses of that in this one. But this one's going to be like if you have blank slate from scratch, going straight into the you know high level stuff as fast as you can. So that one will be cool for a lot of family and friends and you know just the public because you know there's a whole niche of people that are in that position. So yeah, January 7th, 6 p.m. Pacific, that'll be fire. But so... The main thing I want you guys to take away from this call is just the fact that credit's not evil. Credit is a tool, right? So there's, you know, people that have been, and this is myself included, they've been indoctrinated growing up to think, oh, credit is bad. Just avoid, avoid, avoid. Like if you're having to touch a credit card, that means you're in some sort of fucked up situation or you're going to put yourself in a fucked up situation. And that's not the case, right? It should be leveraged. And I use the word leverage because Leverage is taking advantage of an opportunity, right? It's, it's if you're leveraging your credit, I would say you better not. It's not it's not accurate to say I'm leveraging it to go buy some designer and buy some bullshit that's putting you in the hole. That's not leveraging, right? That's putting yourself into the bad debt that we don't actually want to, you know, be a part of. But I think it's a tool, and just like any tool, right? That's effective. You need proper training for it, or you can hurt yourself, like a hundred percent, right? And right now, I think the personal debt revolving um amount is like over a trillion or something like that and people that have you know uh debts and so i get that a lot not to go on a tangent it's like how could you say credit is so good when there's a lot of people you know that are in tons of debt or whatever and over leveraged in a bad way and i say it's because it's a tool it's about proper training that's like saying you know cars or any vehicle that can get us from one place to another it, we should all just not have cars you know what i'm saying just because it's about how it's used right so it's a vehicle so i've saved thousands using my credit to my advantage and i've made thousands using credit to my advantage i'll talk about both of those in this one um and i enjoyed once in a lifetime for a lot of people like travel experiences first class five star experiences stuff like that that's a whole nother rabbit hole but i'm just letting you know all advanced areas of credit are coming back to what i'm about to speak on in this call so first off I'm going to clear the air with this one because I put a little bit more, uh, you know, marketing into this, like bringing everybody around because I wanted people to be all in one place to efficiently say what I want to say. I just want to say right now, this is not a fucking webinar. Like this is not, there's no upsell. This is a free call. Like I'm going full or mosey with this shit. There is no upsell. There's no nothing. There's a call to action for some free shit at the end, but this is literally probably what I would say somebody would charge multiple thousands of dollars for that I'm just putting out there. And to me, it feels better to just be like, all right, no gimmicks. We just going right into some sauce. And why? I'll explain. But there's no fucking sales tactic at the end. There's no there's no upsell fuckery. Um, there's no offer, really. There's there's a free shit that you guys can get. But anyways, so why am I doing this call? Um, this was inspired by uh, my buddy Caden, actually, in 2017. I kept this photo as soon as he showed me in my gallery and I always looked at it because so many times it came into play, like like some big aha moments in my life were because I had this in mind and I stumbled into some stuff that ended up being life-changing, credit included. 
But this is a funny meme if you look at it. But then the more you look at it, the more serious it gets and the more crazy it gets. And you guys have probably seen me post this multiple times on my on my Insta if you guys follow me on there. And it's just a tiny sliver right here that says the shit that you know. A little bit more than that is the shit that you know that you don't know, but you're like, oh, I'll get to it or whatever, right? But it's really a whole galaxy underneath that's the shit that you don't know that you don't even know. And I think that's crazy because you could be sitting on the couch, chill, not even knowing, like you can't freak out about something that you don't know exists, like an opportunity that you don't even know you're missing out on. And I personally think I want to give the chance for people to come in contact with the information that I've been able to come in contact with and put together some shit that they might have never even heard. I want to at least be the one to put it in front of you and say, hey, look, you had the option to go and pick at this and be like, what's that about? And go decide to study and put the time in to go discover some shit. That's all I want to do, right, is to give you that glimpse because I wish I would have found pretty much the exact roadmap that I'm about to give when I was, you know, 19 and 20, figuring out, like, what is that about? And also, I know the feeling of wanting to improve and change and learn, but not having it like a blueprint, not having a game plan to do so. And just being like that that raw, like eagerness to, to, to progress, but then being like, who, where can I plug in? In this case, I want to be able to have one link that I can send out to somebody for free and be like, if you can stomach this hour or two, this will put you on, right? Also, no one in my space has dropped a step-by-step -step framework. They all love to piece it up. They all love to overcomplicate it. For me, I get I get surgical with it, so I, it can be overwhelming, but it's not overcomplicated. I think I've been able to simplify this um, for the me three years ago. Like I'm saying, is who I think I'm talking to with this, and not that it's an age thing, but if you're where I'm at mentally with the credit space three years ago, this is going to change your fucking life 100. percent So that's what we're gonna do. Um, and I have a really cool free gift at the end, and that's going to help us all, especially going into 2024 and the whole entire year and beyond that. Um, so stay tuned for that because that's going to be epic. So you're going to learn a lot of info in this call. So please, I would say avoid impulse applying or impulse doing anything. Y'all know I say this all the time. Credit is chess. You need to, you know, understand your full game plan. And so what I would recommend doing is writing down practical steps. And we'll work on them after we clarify that is what you should do, right? So, yeah, that's a big mantra of mine. Credit is chess, not checkers. You have to think many moves ahead, just like in the real chess games. And your actions have high stakes. So one little thing that you don't think is a big deal right now could be, um, you know, restricting you from doing something later on just because you didn't know about certain limitations. So there's things like bank rules. There's the effect that inquiries can have on your situation. There's debt to income ratios. You could be like, oh, I didn't know utilization was a big thing. That could be a beginner thing to some, but shit matters. All things have repercussions. So um, don't stumble around, have a plan, and this will be your exact plan. So first and foremost, personal credit is the foundation. Some people want to skip and go no PG, business credit, da 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 EIN only stuff. And they get all the, you know, the clickbaity information around that. The fact is, personal credit is where it's at. 99% of your success is going to come from having good personal credit. All the other advanced stuff, travel hacky stuff, the leveraging, 0%, it's all based on personal credit, 100%. So you can screenshot this if you want. Like These are some top banks. But all the major banks that you hear about, they're going to make you do what's called PGing your uh, credit to get business credit cards. It's PG is personal guarantee. So that means they're going to be pulling your personal credit file for those business approvals. So it's not a, I want to tackle this misconception. It's not a separation. It's not a business credit thing versus a personal credit thing. They're connected, like directly connected. Until you go into like the crazy uh, corporate credit where you're dealing with millions of revenue and you're actually able to just P, like no PG with the business. Even that, it's not like no accountability, like no PG, they'll still come after you. So I don't even like to to harp on or I don't even like to highlight the no PG stuff because it's all PG, essentially, that you need to worry about. Don't think that, oh, my credit's fucked up, so I can just try and build this business credit. It's not going to go well. And someone's basically just going to try and pull a bunch of money from you with that in mind and make you think that it's an opportunity, but it's not. So PG all the way. You could think of it as personal credit um, applications using PG is like jumper cables for your business credit. Like you literally are able to jumpstart any LLC. It could be brand new. Don't even have to be LLC. Y'all hear me talk about sole prop funding all the time now. Probably the most loud one when it comes to that. 
not anti LLC, but I think a lot of people could still get crazy business funding results with just sole prop. Um, and that's a gem. You can get straight into the best credit products out the gate with your LLC or even a sole prop as long as you have A1 personal credit. I got my first 250000 in business funding with my three-month-old LLC. So it wasn't brand new, but it was, a, it was a little past brand new. And I didn't even know what a net 30 was, a business credit bureau, a paid X score, Dun & Bradstreet. I didn't know any of that. I just literally had good bank relationships and I had good personal credit. And uh, we're going to explain how to get to that point and better than what I had at the time. So how you should think about it conceptually is this. Think about having an 850, which you don't even have to get up to an 850, but an A1 credit profile, and then just putting it behind some velvet ropes and just looking at it, just letting it stay pretty and using that, like I said, as jumper cables on the business side and rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat using that base card that we built or that we're going to build on the personal side and just using that forever, basically, and leaving it untouched after that point. So it's not... People ask me, is there such thing as too much credit? On the personal side, I think there's actually a sweet spot where you shouldn't really go above because we shouldn't even be playing on the personal side for too long. We should get it right, get it looking A1, then move on to the business side, ASAP. And so the model that I came up with, I've distilled it into three phases, is what I call, and this, this is coined by me, like I literally came up with this to present in a way that makes sense to everybody. I call it the grow, treat, go method, right? So here's a little bit of a deeper dive into what the grow, treat, go method looks like. So the grow stage is, you know, starting from scratch or wherever you're at, right? If you're a little bit further, if you have one or two accounts or one or two bank accounts even. Um, so it would be these three tasks mainly. It would be establishing your banking relationships, especially for the banks that you want to get credit for in the future. So starting to warm them up, basically rub shoulders and then cleaning up your personal information on all your personal credit reports. That's something you got to do individually because these three credit bureaus are not talking to each other all the time. They're separate companies. So it's very easy to do. Don't think you need to pay for anybody to do that. It's actually something you can do completely on your own. But then also, most importantly, building your base of credit accounts via things like secured installment loans that we'll get into. And then possibly one to two specific credit cards, not just any credit card in the beginning, because obviously you're at your worst possible stage of getting any good products. So you don't want to get any very bad products. Like a lot of people get stuck with the Open Sky, the Credit One, you know, the complete subprime cards. And that's because they're targeted in that way because they have bad or no credit at that point. And then everyone ends up saying, man, that's my oldest card, <laughs> but it's my lowest limit. And, and they can't, they're, they're stuck because they're like, I don't want to close it because it's what's building my credit. It's the oldest thing. Yeah, you don't get in that, you know, catch 22 you can completely avoid that. And that's my point. But the treat phase is just a little bit of a boring phase, I guess. And and also, I hate the the do this 150K in 30 days, 60 days. Da, 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 da. I'm like super marathon minded. Like I like to say you should be holding out longer than that. I feel like it, you can definitely get quick results. I can talk about the uh, the 18 year old that is a course student that uh, we got like the Amex Gold, Apple Card, and a GM card in like a week after turning 18. Like there's those options. Fast tracking is an option, but I don't like to market with that or I don't like to lead with that because I feel like that brings like the wrong crowd. But you, def you definitely can fast track in certain areas. But I think treating your credit correctly, that's just something that's, it's, that's something that you necessarily can't avoid, right? That's the whole, that's what's going to keep your credit A1 moving into, you know, like real life after. So um, four to six months of age from those primaries that you get in the grow stage, that's what you're going to shoot for before we move on to the go phase where we're actually applying for stuff. Um, so using the credit, the using the credit products properly, basically, that's it. And then possibly like polishing them. So getting some credit limit increases on any credit cards, soft pull, if it's applicable at that point. Um, and then fine tuning it at the end, just making sure you know exactly what you're going to hit testing the waters with soft pull pre-qualifications because no credit application should be a gamble like, you know, Hail Mary. It should be like, I damn near know, guaranteed that I'm going to get this approval and I know where it pulls from. I know it's estimated what I'm going to get from them, what how I'm going to hit the sign up bonus. All of that should be planned out. Like I said, it's chess moves. And I'll explain the first personal funding sequence that you should go for that will let you lead into your first real business funding sequence because there's a separation, right? There's a personal funding and business funding and 
personal sets you up for A1 business results. So we're going to do legit a live walkthrough. Like this is probably going to be a lot, but I'm going to just let y'all have it. Like I said, we're going to record this. We're going to post this up so you can literally come back to this like a Wikipedia and be like, where am I at? Okay, boom. Okay, what's next? Because like I said, I've never seen it put in this way. Like, yeah, this is going to be a crazy power hour. One's in the chat right now. Let me make sure everybody's here. I'm looking for the chat. I see the ones, people holding them up. I see the chat. And I see a lot of cool, familiar faces in here. So that's epic, dude. Let's go. All right. So, and then some of y'all have seen some of these slides because, you know, some of these are directly from my mentorship that I have, which I'm not even trying to plug it, but I'm just saying sometimes you do need to hear the same information again to get that clarity. But let's get right into it. This, whew, this is going to be a lot. <laughs> All right. So step one, that credit foundation, the growth stage, right? You can screenshot this, but I mean, like I said, we're going to have this as a resource. You want your mix of installment and revolving accounts. And for those that don't know the difference, installment accounts are like loans. So student loans, personal loans, car loans, uh, mortgages, right? Things that have a fixed term, like, hey, you know, either 30 years like a mortgage or 60 months or whatever, right? An installment account has payment installments revolving means it's open until you decide to close it it revolves you can use it every month pay it down get it back right and be able to use it uh credit cards are revolving accounts and lines of credit as well like the loc products so a b lock a p lock technically a HELOC as well home equity line of credit those things are like a revolving door like you can use them pay them off again and again and so that's accomplishing our credit mix in this stage you want bare minimum at least one of each, right? So at least one installment, at least one revolving. But this is my like A1 roadmap. So um, we'll talk about the pledge loan hack. I would say this is what you should shoot for. It should be able to go at least 24 months before it closes. And it should be at least $1,000. I went for the, uh, the 10K 60 month, but I think you can even get a 60 month term at like 5K. And people will be like, oh, I don't have 10K to put up, to lock up. Yes, we know. And of course, I'm not ever going to think that everybody can just do that. There's hacks for pulling uh, pulling off a high limit installment uh, pledge loan hack. It's exactly what I did um, because the pledge loan hack works in a crazy way. I don't even know if I have it on this on the slide. So let me just explain it right here. And I have podcasts on this and, and content on this all the time because it's major. Everyone should do it. The pledge loan hack is like it's a secured loan. It's so if you understand what a secured credit card is, normally you put up some collateral and then they keep it, right? For like a year or whatever until you graduate and they give it back. Normally, an, a secured loan would work the same way. It's not the case at Navy. At Navy Federal, the pledge loan hack, it, this is something that it sounds so crazy that I almost have to say it again and again because people are like trying to make sure, is that easy? Yes. So hear me out. Let's say I generate, let's say I could do it for $100 because I have $100 in front of me. Let's say I'm going to give this $100 to Navy Federal and say, I want to create a pledge loan for this amount, $100, boom. They're going to lock that money up in their safe and then they're going to give me back $100, but in the form of a loan with a payment structure. So they're like, hey, you can take this $100, pay us back over 24 months. And you're going to act like that's what you're going to do. And you're going to be like, cool, let's set up the loan. Boom. It's a no credit check product. So you're going to get approved. You could have bad credit and be building a relationship with Navy and building an installment loan just with this one hack. And then literally two days, three days after you set it up, you go ahead and pay. I would rip this $100 bill, but I'm not about to. Y'all crazy for that. If you think I am, you're going to put 99% of that money right back to them. You're going to literally pay off 99% of the loan. It could be 90, it could be 95. The numbers, they float around. I went 99%. I paid off. I did a 10K, right? I give it to them. They gave me 10K back, but in the form of a loan, right? It's technically not my original money. They gave me back a loan. And I created a 60 month payment term. So five years. And then I went and paid $9,950. Uh, and I only have a $50 balance left. So when it reported to my credit, I can show you screenshots. Literally, it said like 99% paid off and I've had good payments reporting every month since it's existed and I haven't had to pay anything because I basically paid ahead, but it kept the 60 month term. So I'm literally going to be on autopilot for five years building my credit with a 
paid off loan, which is great because it doesn't affect my debt to income because it looks like it's all almost paid off. But I'm not paying 100% of it for the purpose of keeping it open. As soon as you pay off a loan in full, it closes, right? So you can't just revolve and do it again because it's an installment account. It doesn't work like a credit card where you just, you know, you get a loan for a house, 300K. When you pay it off, the loan's done. It's not like you just have another 300K to go throw somewhere else. You have to get a new loan. So anyways, yeah, that's a crazy hack. If you haven't heard about that, go ahead and put a pin on that, put a note on it. Pledge loan hack. Okay, I'm gonna need him to explain that, run that back. I have a little like stick figure diagram. Like it's funny, but it does make more sense to people sometimes. We'll show that in a different piece of content, but um, the pledge loan hack. One thing, no credit check that you can go grab from Navy. And it also gives you crazy long-term benefits of relationship building with Navy because Navy's a gem. I even talk about how to get into Navy Federal without using any unethical tactics like saying you have a grandpa that doesn't exist. I will always call that out and be like, that's BS. Don't do it. And you're probably going to get your account shut down if you got in like that or if you're doing it like that. Stay away from it. There's ethical ways to get into Navy that don't require you to be in the military, that don't require you to have family in the military. Um, if you want to write something down to make sure I get back to it, the roommate play, that's valid for everybody. You don't even have to be family related. You can get in with a household member, get in with Navy um, and go ahead and, and you know, run all the hacks that I have with Navy. I, have, I could drop a Navy Federal Mastery mini course on y'all because there's so much, so much benefit, but we'll, we'll keep it moving. Uh, Credit Strong is an alternative. If you absolutely can't, like I'm going to say right now, 99% of y'all can, but if you can get in Navy Federal or if you've given up because you're just too lazy to figure out how to do it, Credit Strong is an alternative. You can you can pay $49 a month. Basically, what you're doing is you're not paying $49 to them. They're forcing you to pay them $49 a month to put it into a savings account to show payment history. So you set up a term for, let's say, five years. You would, in theory, be paying them for five years that 50 bucks just to show payment history, just to have an installment reporting. And at any point in that term, like let's say you only have it for a year or two, because by that time your credit's in decent shape, you could just cancel it and you'll get all your money back, 99% of your money back. They take a couple of dollars in fees or whatever, but that's a good alternative. I mean, you could do both is what I'm saying in this in this map as well. You can do two pledge loans, for example, and I know you can do two credit strong products and there's four primary accounts that you could be building on the installment side. And they're all no credit check. And they're all literally could be basically building you a tree trunk of a base to go with you, right? But I like the pledge loan hack because it's like on autopilot. I get my money back. If I didn't uh, explain that, I'm paying off 99% with the loan money that they gave me. And then they're releasing my security deposit back to me. So I literally still have 10,000 in my hands. Like me specifically, I, that's what I did. And it's funny because I actually got that from a credit card. I, I, I did a whole crazy advanced play and I, I liquidated money off the credit card to have more money in my hands to go create the pledge loan, get the money back, pay the card back off. And I was like literally OPMing my way to create a, a primary account on my credit, which was no credit check. It was insane. And that ended up having me have great relationship uh, with Navy. It's crazy. There's so many plays, but I'll, I'll say... This is a screenshotable roadmap right here. And rewards secured card is another. Um, these are going into the revolving side of things. These are the, like the, pretty much the only two credit products I would get as a credit cards. Um, the end rewards because it graduates super fast. You can get uh, more credit limit like fastest I've ever seen. I've seen two hundred dollars secured limits go to two thousand dollars secured limits in like three to six months. It's it's freaking crazy. And then I, I think I might even show a. Um, no, yeah, because we had to be real concise about this this one. I can't even, so I have so many visuals and diagrams and shit. The end reward secured card is the only card that can start out as a secured card and then upgrade to the cash rewards, which can go up to 50K and it upgrades on its own, like usually six months to a year later. And then it can even upgrade to the flagship card at Navy, which is an $80,000 limit credit card. So you're literally going from a secured card to an 80K limit card potential, right? Because you can boost the limit up to that amount. And it's still keeping the same age, same payment payment history, same everything on your credit report. You're just like shape-shifting into that better and better product as you go. So like after a year and some change, you literally went from a starter card to an A1, they call it literally the flagship product. It's wild. Um, and what I put here in the notes is you can actually force 
Navy, which usually pulls TransUnion, you can force them to pull Experian by freezing your TransUnion. And then you could, in theory, wipe or, you know, rinse the Equifax or sorry, Experian inquiry off over the phone. There's a whole, you know, 24 hour Experian removal hack to do that. Kind of advanced. But um, if you don't just take the hit on TransUnion, you could just be like, OK, that's one inquiry on my TransUnion. I still have other bureaus that have zero on them because they're all separate. So understand that. The three credit bureaus, they, they're they not the same report. So you might have zero inquiries on Experian and maybe the dealership you went to pulled TransUnion and you got 30 freaking inquiries on TransUnion because they screwed you and they shotgunned your report. That could be a thing. But then you could understand that and be like, okay, well, shoot, I, I my, my TransUnion is shot right now. Let me go use my my Experian because it's, it's blank. Um, So we will, that's one of the chess moves that we do is we plan out what pulls from where. And so, yeah, you can you can basically force them to pull anything. Um, and some some other banks work like that, too. But in this case, I'm, like I said, so much info I could talk about. I have to be very lean and mean for you guys, because if not, I'll have to go on tangents and clarify a bunch of shit. So just it's kind of like like I'm just using the calculator right now. And I could show you the math because I could write it out and show my work. But right now, I'm just being like straight to the point. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. Chase Freedom Rise, this is actually a card that's not that talked about. Um, the Freedom Rise, it's in the Freedom family of cards. So there's Freedom Unlimited, uh, Freedom Flex, and then this Freedom Rise. This is literally meant for people just starting out in the credit space. Um, so no credit or low credit, you can get this card. Literally, they tell you to data mine with them. They tell you just open a checking account with Chase and put 250 bucks in it. Same day, if you did that, same day, you have very high odds of getting something of a limit from Chase. And that's great because that's your, like, imagine your first or your second card being with Chase. You're already building a relationship with the Chase family. It's like, it's epic. So um, the 524 rule is great for that because Chase is like very stingy on who can actually um, apply for cards with them. So let, let's say, let's say you listen to all the fake gurus on IG and you got the kickoff, you got the chime, uh, you got the credit AI, all these things you probably heard about. Those are products that report as revolving accounts. So that counts towards this 524 rule, which Chase 524 rule says, if you get five revolving accounts in a two year period, they're going to look at you as like a credit churner, like you're just doing too much. And they're going to automatically start denying you for stuff. And you're screwed. You can't get any personal Chase cards at that point. And that's basically one of those chess moves that we have to plan for. If you didn't know, you're going to be real pissed when you get all these little store cards and Victoria's Secrets and then the kickoffs and shit because you think you're doing something. And then you're like, oh, I am screwed out of Chase for the next two years. And you'll be very sad because you, you just basically they didn't care about clarifying it for you. And I'm trying to. So this case, we get a Chase card right out the gate. And this can actually graduate to one of the cooler uh, Chase cards. And it's, it's earning points out the gate. No annual fee. Uh, it's a no brainer. And so that's going to most likely pull experience as well. Um but you could wipe both of these because they're Experian uh, hard pulls. So you could go over the phone if you want, or you could leave them. It's totally up to you. Um, this, this game plan can go faster or slower based on how fast you want to do things. And I'll show you. Um, this is actually a very high level presentation. So it's kind of crazy of me trying to put it all into one place for you guys. But um, I would dedicate your daily spend on, instead of debit cards. I will put them on these two cards to try and encourage them to increase the limits during that treatment phase. Remember when we're just keeping stuff, um, you know, normal. On the banking side, in that first little go round, these are the bank accounts that I would recommend that you get started with. So Chase for sure. Uh, remember, because if you're going to get the Freedom Rise, they want you to open up a Chase chain account just to increase your odds, put a little couple hundred bucks in there. But there's also a $200 bonus that you could get by opening up the Chase checking account. Make sure you go through either somebody's referral link or make sure you're just going somewhere on Google where they give you the option to get the $200 bonus. It's stupid easy to hit. It's like basically what you have to do is put $500 in direct deposits within like 60 days or 90 days. You could do that a bunch of different ways. Like there's ways to hack your way around that, that I know like bank bonus churning is a whole thing. You can make $10,000 a year just bank bonus churning, but it's $500. Go do some DoorDash stuff or go move your employers because that Chase probably should be your new main bank account because they're the best points and leverage uh bank in the game really to be like buddy buddy with i would i would say that's very easy for a lot of people to hit so 500 dollars will make you an extra 200 dollars if you just direct deposit into it and you can make another extra 500 dollars uh referring people to get chase checking accounts once you have one 
You can just use your referral friend link and you get like 50 bucks a person. You can do up to 10 a year. So it's 500 bucks. I max out mine every year. So that's a total of 700 bucks in profit you can get just off opening this Chase, Chase checking account. Wells Fargo usually has a $300 bonus for a very similar um, task to hit. And that's just all one. You don't even have a referral side of things. Uh, you could go Amex High Yield Savings because I've talked about that. Hey, it's a form of like uh, showing showing off to Amex like you're a customer. And so now they're going to start targeting you for stuff. But again, thinking chess moves, it will void the possibility of getting this really cool bonus for a business checking account down the road with Amex. So because you, can, you can't have both. And I actually ran into this the hard way. So I had a high yield savings account. Then they dropped the business checking, which comes with like a 60,000 point bonus. And I couldn't get it because they're like, oh, you already bank with us. This bonus is not for you. So I was like, that's shitty. So I'm not going to date them on with uh, Amex at this point because I've seen that you don't have to to get approvals. And if I did want to date them on with them at this point, then I would get most likely the prepaid debit card that they have. So it's still getting a product from Amex to kind of be like, hey, I'm on the radar, but it's not ruining the possibility of getting that free, free bonus. 60,000 points can actually be worth a lot. So I took my parents to Spain on business class from LAX to Malaga. We had a stopover in Paris. That was for like 38,000 Amex points. So almost two business class flights I could have copped with um, that 60,000 point bonus with the right transfer boost, understanding like how to master the travel hacking side, you could. And those are like $5,000 tickets. Like those, it's crazy. So to me, I always value points over cash back, but I'm, I'm going to actually talk in more cash back terms on this call because I want to think about profit in your pocket first. Sometimes if that's priority in the beginning, you can always make more points, right? But if you need the money now, then go ahead, right? This money, um, I don't know if it qualifies as financial advice or not, but uh, points in cash back are not taxable because they're considered rebates. So you can look into that. It's not something that can be taxed. So if you get a thousand dollar bonus from one of these cards or, or a bank bonus, actually bank bonuses are different. You do get taxed on that, but card bonuses, um, is tax free. I will get the Navy federal checking and savings. They're going to make you at least get a savings account in this case, but, uh, I would get both because you can get a free version of both and just have them. And the more products, the better, because we're trying to show that we're being uh, diversified with them. And then I would get probably one other institution. I would say U.S. Bank if you can, because not only are they the fifth largest bank out of the you know the top banks in America, but they also have A1 business checking and personal checking uh, bank bonuses, which is easy money. Um, so $400 on the personal side and $750 on the business checking side. That's an easy $2,150 in bonuses. And that's just bank bonuses. And I'm also like three birds, one stone here because I'm getting the bonuses. I'm data mining and I'm eventually going to go for credit at these banks. So I'm going to get more bonuses and more funding. So it's, it's like, it's insane, but this is a chess move, right? It could not look like too flashy or sexy to be like, apply for these accounts, but trust me, it's a long-term play. Um, quick little gem here. So the personal checking account at US Bank, uh, this is going to be like a whole rabbit hole. Um, personal checking at US Bank, you can actually fund your initial deposit with a credit card. For six hundred dollars, I think up to six hundred dollars. So imagine this: like, this is just off the top of my head. The Freedom Unlimited has a, a sign up bonus where if you spend five hundred dollars on the card, they give you two hundred back. You could literally spend quote unquote five hundred or six hundred on that initial deposit with when you're opening that business checking or a personal checking account online, even, and that'll count as spend, and you'll get that two hundred dollar credit card bonus just from swiping on a purchase when in reality it was your initial uh deposit that happened there's actually a lot of opportunities for that that's a whole nother call but the u.s bank personal checking has one and even navy has one if you're applying over the phone you can do up to 250 dollars initial deposit through credit card you can literally just swipe it and it'll code as um it'll say membership fee and it'll be qualified as a purchase not a cash advance or not a balance transfer. So, but that's your one opportunity to do it. So just write it down. Like I got to make sure I don't miss out on that, right? Because that can be some extra spend that could let us hit some credit card bonuses. But anyways, uh, I'm going to click back real quick to the first slide. This was the credit side of things in the grow phase. And this is the banking side of things in the grow phase. So that we did a whole lot, but that was a whole lot of setup, right? Putting our roots down because we're going to go profit off that later. And we already did profit a lot off that, as you, as you saw. 
Step two is just treating that foundation well, right? So that, that treat phase. After treating the cards well, this is what's going to happen most likely. Like I say, very, very likely. That end rewards secured card is going to graduate to a, crash, uh, a cash rewards card. And your limit is probably going to go from, if it started at that little 200 hour limit, at least 2K or more, right? If you secured more and they upgraded you to a higher limit, your security deposit is going to be back in your pocket. And now you're going to have a fully unsecured card. And that's probably going to be around six months of um, using the card correctly, paying on time and all that stuff, right? For anybody that's like, oh, I can't get into Navy. Remember, you had your Credit Strong alternative product for the installment side. And I forgot to mention, if because you wouldn't be able to get the end reward secured card in this case, I would just go get the uh, Discover secured card, most likely. I don't really like Discover as a long-term play, but if we're talking credit building and like just some, some one or two credit cards to start with, that one also has no annual fee and a pretty fast graduation path. Normally, I see six months as well to graduate. So that's an alternative someone can write down. And I know the more advanced people in here are like, man, he's just, he's being too beginner based right now. But I'm like, this is even high level stuff for some people that think they've been in credit for a while to think about things in this way, in this intricate of a way. So that's why I'm trying to hit all the bases. Um, but most likely you're going to get a credit limit increase on that Chase Freedom at this point as well. And so I, I pretended like you, you were starting out with a baby little minimum limit that they'll give you, which is $500 probably going to be up to a thousand by now. So after four to six months of treating these cards, well, I'm putting those numbers out conservatively. So I'm conservative on these limits I'm saying, and I'm conservative on the four to six months could be three months, right? Uh, it depends on the spending and it depends on your relationship, but like six months in with six months, average age of primaries, I would say. So six months of having those accounts that we just talked about, and you can boost your age a little bit synthetically by using authorized user accounts. So like if your mom or your grandma or somebody has an account like a Macy's card from back in the day, they can add you onto that card and you can actually hijack the credit age of that account and it's going to post on your credit report as if it's yours, right? And they're going to say, it's going to say authorized user instead of primary account holder, but it's still going to be able to boost your age and that can help us a lot in this personal side. If you can, that's cherry on top, that's killer. Like if you can find anybody that can do that for you for free, um, could be, doesn't have to be family. It could be friends. Literally, if someone has, I would say a card that's at least a year old and at least a few thousand in available credit, that's major. Like even just adding one or two of them on. So I don't necessarily tell everybody to go to the extent of paying for those. And then obviously you have to trust the source of where you're paying because you have to give them sensitive info to get it to post on your credit. Cause you have to give them your social. And then also you got to know that one, it'll actually post. Two, they're not going to post and have a fucking maxed out credit card posting and now you're screwed and it, it hurt you more than it harmed you. And then three, that they would give you a refund if anything went south because, you know, it could go south like that. It, what if it just don't report in the time that they thought, right? There's a whole, uh, you know, pitfalls, pros and cons to it. But that's why I say just go for family and friends and go free, right, to start out. And it's not needed. So I'm just saying that's a cherry on top if you can. That'll probably increase the results of this first little phase of stuff we're doing. Um, but at this phase, after six months of having your own accounts, so not just trying to lean your whole credit situation on those AUs, right? You can mark down AUs if you want to be like, he needs to break that down more because that was kind of crazy. What the fuck did he just say, right? Put down authorized users. We'll go into a whole rabbit hole about those. Um, but at this point, with six months of credit age on your own, you'll do what I call like looking for green lights with soft pull pre-qualification tools. So I like using the Apple card pre-qualification tool and I'm looking for a 5K or more limit that they're granting to me. And I'll just spill a bunch of information right here. Normally, Apple card is going to be the most generous card at this little starter phase. They're not subprime, but um, they're definitely aimed more towards like the starters. So you'll be surprised to get a 2K, a 5K or more limit here just with this little tiny setup that we've that we've gotten with. And I'm using that as reference to be like, OK, if I'm seeing 5K with Apple, that means I can expect other banks to probably give me around the same amount based on what they're seeing on my credit. This is what Apple showing me. This is very important that I'm looking at that 5K number because. The Sapphire Preferred, the CSP that I'm trying to show you start your personal funding sequence with, that's got a minimum starting limit of 5K. So therefore, it's like, what if you could have gotten approved at Chase for 4K, but just under it? So because it's not 5K, 
you would be technically denied for that sapphire preferred and they are not going to tell you like hey uh if you would apply for the freedom <laughs> if you would apply for the freedom we would have gave you something but in this case no so that's why i'm like i'm really trying to make sure i see green 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 on all these banks so i'm like okay cool it's damn near a shoe in i know that chase is going to give me this you know this card i'll explain so that's something you guys can do right now so if you have me on your laptop and you have your phone open you don't even need an iphone by the way some people are like oh i can't get the apple card i don't got an apple product you could just literally go get an iCloud and go apply on a desktop. It's funny. Or your phone. Um, so it, an iOS product does not limit you from trying. You can go prequal, soft pull with the Apple card and see a limit. And this is one of the rare cards that actually show you a preset limit. And like, that's exactly what you're going to get. Like no guesses. So if they show you, hey, you're pre-qualified for 5K. If you click that button, that next button, you're going to get the 5K credit card. Like it's in your wallet like seconds after. So be careful because you don't want to get a hard pull from that unexpectedly. And then now it's again, chess moves. You fucked up your whole order of operations, right? Be careful. But if you want a little dopamine boost or whatever, you can go over there and peek and you can go put some information in, right? Um, they'll, they'll take household income, estimated income. Normally, if you can prove it with your household, anywhere between 80 to 150K, is going to go super smooth. I've actually never seen them verify even like crazier amounts. Like they'll just not give you a card if they don't like you. But I've seen 200K and no no docs requested. And that'll give you like 8K or 15K limit card out the gate potentially. My personal experience, I started with a $6,500 limit. Credit limit increased after like three months with that. Got up to 15. And then went from 15 to 25. And now I'm chilling at 25. So it was very generous, especially in the beginning. Um, let me just drop the Apple card hack right here. We're going to talk about it in the funding uh, actual sequence, but you're going to freeze TransUnion after you see that screen. So you're like, yay, they're going to show me 5K. What do I do now? Don't press yes. Just swipe away, you know, swipe out of it. Don't accidentally press none. You're going to go freeze your TransUnion Bureau because we know that's where they're going to pull from. You can freeze all three if you really want to be safe, but we're going to freeze TransUnion and then you would technically accept the card if you wanted to and it will block that transunion pull. And so anytime we can block a transunion or any inquiry from any bureau, anytime we can block an inquiry, we will. Because why not? We're reducing the impact on our credit, right? We're going to possibly avoid five or 10 points being dropped because of that inquiry that would have been on there. And this is one of the few institutions that literally will let you pull off that hack. So we call that a you know inquiry block hack, or we'll call it usually the name of the card and then a hack, a soft pull hack, whatever. But it's actually funny because Apple Card is probably the last card that you should press accept on because it's so easy like that. So we're going to prequal for them and just swipe off. Just leave that prequal there. You can just claim it any time. So just leave it alone. With Amex, they have a really cool tool. You can soft pull guaranteed like prequal yourself with them. They have it, The tool is called Apply with Confidence. So you can literally apply with confidence. They'll show you the gold or the platinum, which is what you should be looking for because you want to see that they're showing you their best products. And you just see the gold. They'll literally say, if you click this button, similar to Apple, you're going to get the card. And so again, just another green light that we can see. We can have that on a tab and be like, all right, that's cool. We know we're going to get that. And then at Chase, sometimes they'll, par they'll target you in app. So that's why I recommend banking over there is because if they literally show you some crazy language, like uh, you're already approved, sometimes they literally do that. They, sh they tell you again, that's another like no brainer. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's say I'm seeing that in my app and I'm seeing the gold and I'm seeing the Apple card. That's like four cards I could swipe in a matter of seconds. Boom, boom, boom. I got to know how to hit those bonuses, but that's easily for high quality cards, right? Uh, and then Wells Fargo would be for like, if we're aiming for the built card. So I want to just use the Wells Fargo prequal tool, soft pull, because I know that's what is underwriting the built card. And I just want to see that Wells Fargo is like rocking with me in some type of way. Like I want to see like some of their Wells Fargo personal cards. They're probably not going to just show the built card on there because it's a different brand, but Wells Fargo is the backbone underwriting the built card. If you guys didn't know that, that's actually um, what's going on. So that's why I'm like, I'm just looking for reference. Like I'm like apples to apples with all this stuff. I'm like, okay, if this bank will do this, I can bet pretty highly that this bank is going to do that, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I know that was a little advanced, but that's my green lights that I'm trying to put all together. And then what's going to actually start some serious business? Like what's going to start the first hard pull? Like, okay, I'm rocking and rolling now. It's just getting real. Sapphire Preferred is what I would say is going to go first because again, imagine you get the Apple Amex uh the built card and then you got your your two 
that you already you uh, were building your credit with. So the Rise and the Navy, that's already five cards. You could have maxed out on the 524 on accident. And now you're trying to, oh, reach back for the Sapphire because you missed it. And it's like, too bad, bro. You just literally stacked you know, your chances away on accident. So that's why I'm like, Sapphire Preferred is my sniper entry. I need that first. Now target acquired, I can go get the rest of the cards in, in a fast succession, right? But if like, if I'm applying for the Sapphire Preferred, I got to make sure that approval goes through before I continue the sequence. And to clarify, if we talk about credit sequencing, it is not like Mr. You know, 30 screens open and I got to click, 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 click in a matter of 10 seconds. People talk about it like it is. No, let's say the Sapphire Preferred goes to pending. Everything is at full stop for today <laughs> until you get that approval. And then, then from there, you keep the, the ball rolling. But it doesn't have to be seconds apart, right? If we get an instant approval, that's great. We can keep rocking and rolling. And if I wanted to speed run this shit, I guess I could do it in 30 seconds. But I'm not going to. That's extra stressful. And we're not like some people say, you got to spam the bureaus because like otherwise they're going to see the inquiry they can see the inquiries immediately they're going to like you can't outwit them so that's just for the record that's like some beginner stuff i feel like i should i should point out because that used to be a thing where it's like open up all your tabs and then click 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 no no need but yes so the csp is going to start you off so let's say we got that whoops mm, yeah now we're going into like the personal sequence that i'm talking about this is the setup sequence to actually run the crazy business funding later. It's gonna look like this. So CSP is gonna give us that one experience inquiry, right? Then we're gonna apply for built. Second, they're gonna pull experience two, most likely. It depends on where you're located. You could look at data points, but this is what's going on in at least the state of California and in most other states around. So built is gonna pull experience. I'm gonna put them right after Chase. Chase is first, because the 524 rule, right? And they're the most sensitive. Bill is second, and Amex is third because they're the least inquiry sensitive. So I know that I'm going to put them in that in that order. Plus, I'm looking at the Apply with Confidence tool. They're already showing me they rock with me. And um, we're going to do exactly what I put in the subtitles, which is we're going to block TransUnion and force Amex to pull Experian only. So you can kind of get away with this little, little uh, inquiry blocking hack, not completely because you're going to have to force, like let them pull Experian, you can't do it like the Apple car where they just don't pull anything, but you can minimize it, right? So you can stop them from double pulling, which is fire. Um, you can also get the Blue Business Plus. I would say not the same day. Wait a few months because it used to be you can do it same day, but now they're going to need you to actually show that Amex card that you got. So this one, the gold on your personal credit, uh, and that's going to take a month or two to show up or whatever, potentially. And so you want that to show up on your credit first before you go for another one. But a little hack here and we'll get into it later you can get multiple amex cards with no hard pull just by nature of you being a customer once you got your foot in the door on the personal side all other cards are going to be no hard pull so just keep that in mind that's a crazy hack so i literally got six cards in a weekend like a, a friday saturday sunday and i'm about to show that play in a couple slides but like that's the extent that we can do it and you can go up to seven but I was being conservative at six. I know that sounds crazy, but anyways, we'll get into it. Um, but this is a really good card. Um, no brainer in the beginning. It's the lowest hanging fruit type of business card that you can get. It's no. It's also no annual fees, 2X on everything, 0% for 12 months. It's a fire product. But yeah, so this is your personal experience, 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 boom, in that order. And then the Apple card is like I said, that cherry on top, no hard pull here. In total, in total, on our credit profile so far, we only have three experience increase. We got this one, this one, and this one. Because if we would have wiped the other two, right, the Navy one and the, uh, what was the other one? The first two credit builder cards that we got, the Freedom Rise and then the Navy Secured, we could have forced those to pull experience and then we could have wiped it. Or, so in this case, you could have had three or you could have had five if you were like, I don't want to wipe anything. That's totally fine. It's It's fine. It's understandable. Um, you'll still probably be able to pull off what I just said because you had six months of distance between those first two and then these three, right? Okay, so these are the estimated limits and these me, this is me being really, really conservative too. Uh, so like, again, minimum starting limit of 5K, 5 to 10K. That can, uh, yeah. So 5 to 10, 5 to 10, I've seen 30 before, but I'm gonna be conservative. 
2K starting limit, kind of, because it's a charge card. If y'all don't know about the difference between charge cards and preset cards, charge cards, that's the ones with the Amex face on it and it's metal, most likely. And people say no limit. But the thing is, it has a limit. It's just like not a preset limit hard every month. Like if, if Chase says 5K, they mean it, right? You can't go over. But if Amex is like, hey, you're approved for the gold card, it could be 5K soft like this month. And then because you spent and paid it off, now it kind of grew invisibly in the back end. Like you don't know until you go ask for your spending power, which I don't really recommend that you do because that'll probably scare them if you do it too much. But it's kind of soft and adaptable. So charge cards go up and down and they don't show a preset limit on your credit profile because they don't have one. So that's the difference. Charge cards have no preset limit, but they do have some sort of soft ceiling. Um, so there's not really no limit. It's just like a spending power that goes up and down. But yeah, that's the explanation on that. This one is a preset limit. So it will give you like usually 2000 if you're just starting out. But you can credit limit increase each one of the ones I highlighted in three months. So imagine three months later, you're spending decently on these cards. These are going to go up. These limits are going to go up. And I'll show you a little bit of an estimate. Um, and we can get more cards right here because look, our Equifax is empty. Our TransUnion is empty. We could have got three and three, and that could have been an extra six cards, right? An extra hella more funding in this case right here. But it's not the focus because, again, there is a such thing as too much credit looking on the personal side because you could look over leveraged. I could show you a screenshot of Chase denying somebody for too much available credit. That's the thing. On the personal side, that's the thing they, they see. So we're trying to have a nice prime window of how we look. Not over leveraged. We're just trying to look A1. So hopefully that makes sense. That's why I am doing things and not doing things in this exact order. Uh, this can sound like some crazy, like, <laughs> I know, but yeah, this is the way to do it. So, and there could be minor alterations uh, depending on the person. But at this point, you would have seven cards total because you have your two builders that you had, right? The Freedom Rise and the Navy one or the Discover. And then you have one, two, three, four, five. So five plus two, boom. And we'll have conservatively again, 19 to 29,000 in funding at this point. And 2,000 of it is business credit already. And you don't even need an LLC to have that be business credit and to have that not be reporting on your personal credit. That's the benefit of business credit. One of the many benefits is that it doesn't report on your personal side, doesn't affect your score uh, if you treat it right. And so this could already be getting you in that, you know, fork into the business credit side. I would literally do that one as a sole prop. That's a very easy win as a sole prop. And you don't need a DBA. You don't need an EIN. You could literally go first name, last name, home-based business. So use your home address and give them your social. Like it's, it's gonna, actually going to be probably even better results because that's so easily verifiable. They know who you are and your personal info is the same as your business info. Great. Home-based businesses are not a crazy thing anymore, especially after the whole, you know, pandemic situation. Step four, we just pulled off a crazy little sequence. Now we're just going to garden those W's and fine tune so that when we're, when we're back, you know, cool down, we go crazy on the business funding side. I'm going to show you a screenshot that literally could put a funding company out of business if you literally took it and executed with it. So uh, that's coming. But let's garden and fine tune first. So let's work on those bonuses that we just got. Uh, this one's going to have 4K in three months that you have to spend. And I could go on a rant about how to hit spend bonuses because that's a whole other freaking rabbit hole, how to spend without spending. But this is also pretty like manageable, honestly, especially if you like, let's say you just add your girl or add a family member on as an AU and y'all just both dedicate your spending on these cards for a few months, you'll hit these no problem. So this one has 4K in three months you got to spend to get 80,000 points, which bare minimum is worth 800 bucks. Like you could literally put cash back as the option and that'll throw $800 into your checking account. But it'll hurt my heart because I like to use that on, you know, flights and hotels and stuff. But if you need the cash, then that's what it is. Uh, this one has technically no sign up bonus, but they do text you as soon as you get the card. Like, hey, you can uh, get 5X back on everything the first five days up to 10,000 and spend. And so that should be 50, but that's 50,000 build points that you could get pretty easy. It's kind of like a secret sign-up bonus, I guess. But no no sweat if you don't hit that one, prioritizing, you know, cards. This is priority number one. Um, This one I put as priority number one, like built in terms of like how fast it's going to expire. But really, this is the main focus if you're limited on spend. Boom, 4K in three months, 80,000 points. 
This one's cool because it's staggered basically. It's 4K in six months. So I could literally not even spend on the gold card for the first three months. Just put all my energy into this one and hit this. And I still got an extra three months on top. Does that make sense? Like we could literally go 4K in three months here, 4K in three months here. The second little, you know, second batch of three months because it's six. Uh, Amex is like the most generous when it comes to personal credit card signup bonuses. They always have like blah, blah, blah in six months, which is wild. No other company I've seen give you six months to hit a bonus. It's it's insane. Um, watch out for the secret links. I don't think I put that in this presentation, but uh, 90,000 is the max that you can get at the time of this recording. But the website might be showing you 60 or some lower amount. And that's because they're trying to be tricky. They, they might know that you're interested in the card and they literally track that based on your cookies when you're like shopping around and they lowered the signup bonus because they want you to go ahead and take that. Don't do that. Make sure you go get a link that actually has the highest possible sign-up bonus to get those extra points. And it literally doesn't affect your approval odds at all. Like you just got to find the highest link. So I would do the pre-qual, soft pull, blah, 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 play the game, make sure that they're soft pre-qualifying you the same day, and then go find the highest link. Once you see that they told you like, hey, you you can get in. It's like, cool, but I'm going to get my my maximum points. Um, What's also cool with this chase, uh, unlike Amex, Amex wants you to be screwed over. They want you to take the lowest one, right? If you accidentally take the lowest bonus with Chase, like maybe it's 60, something like that, you can actually call and tell them, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just applied for this card um, a few weeks ago, whatever. You have up to 90 days to do it, I believe. You'd be like, I didn't click the highest available bonus. Is there a way you can update it to our, you know, I can get that amount? They literally will. I've had mentees on the phone that just, they call and they get it updated. So Chase is nice. Amex is mean. Uh, Blue Business Plus, 15K uh, points, but 3K in three months is kind of a high for just that little amount. Um, so this is like low priority. And then this one has no sign up bonus. So you don't have to worry about this one. But um, if you have the spend for it, you can go ahead and hit this one. What I like doing, again, there's so many little advanced things you can do to tailor uh, the plan. You can be targeted for the Blue Business Plus to get a, uh, I believe it's a 15K spend in 12 months bonus. Like I'll put that on the back burner. I just want to sign up for that one because it's crazy and it gives you like 75,000 points. So 75,000 points for 15K in 12 months. I have a whole year to hit that. Like that's easy, especially if I'm going to end up using that credit to have like business expenses and normal business spend or whatever, marketing spend, whatever. Very easy to hit in 12 months. That's insane. So that's a minimum of $2,250 in profit right here just off these bonuses if you know how to hit them. So, And I'm, I'm being low because I'm thinking cash back this whole time. I'm not thinking travel. I could easily 3X the value in travel. So I'm looking at it like that's almost 7K in free travel, right? Free rooms, free flights, whatever. Bare minimum for me because 3X, is my opinion, is my baseline for redemptions. But if you want cash, there's the cash, 2,200 bucks, literally, in your sequence. And this is also, we weren't going all crazy sacrificing our, our image on our credit profile. That was stuff that we were already trying to do. Um, those are A1 banks, you know what I'm saying? Those are long-term plays. Everything's long-term in that case. So gardening for six months with that, from that personal sequence, six months is a lot of time. You could be increasing your limits. Like you can use the Amex triple CLI hack. So you can go up to three X your original limit, soft pull, go from 2K to 6K on the Blue Business Plus. Now you already got 6K in business credit and that's still ticking away at the 0%. So at that point, six months in, you still got another six months at 0% and you got 6K, which is fire. Navy, we'll go from two to 10 because every time, if y'all don't know, you can make a note of this. You can ask for up to $8,000 extra at Navy. Every time. It don't matter if it's 2K, it don't matter if that 10K, it can go to 18 the next time. And the worst thing they'll do is counter offer. So if they're like, oh, you can't get eight, but you can get six, you'd be like, damn, I was about to ask for two. So uh, that's a win, right? So it's always best to ask up to eight every time. Eight K extra, they will always just give you whatever they feel like below if they don't want to give you the full 8,000. So yeah, and then the Freedom Rise, you can do a soft pull credit limit increase with Chase now. Um, most of the time, most mostly you'll be targeted if, you, if you're six months down the road, for sure. You'll probably get an extra 2000 with the Freedom Rise there. And then at this point, remember I said chess moves with the Amex checking account. The business checking, you can go ahead and grab that. Probably 30 to 60,000 MR points. It fluctuates. Um, that's a bonus that's worth 300 to 600 minimum, right? It hurts me to talk cash back, but that's minimum. So grand total so far, 
remember on a free call, <laughs> you're going to get at least 33,000 in credit at this point if you're following the blueprint. And 6K of it is already at 0% funding. So you can use that for multiple things. I mean, if, if I was in at that position, I would be investing it on myself because that's not enough to like really leverage, right? So I might buy like a few small paid material things to learn a skill, to go hard in that skill and then start using that freelance skill to make some actual money, like put it on myself, not just like, well, I hope this stock goes up or like, I'm going to go trade with it. Like, nah, don't shoot yourself in the foot, please. Like go learn a skill. That's a whole rabbit hole I can get into. It's, it's another mantra of my brand, like bet on yourself, not know what else, but you're going to talk about at least $4,400 in cash bonuses from a mixture of the credit cards and the banks, uh, the bank checking account bonuses. And we're only six months into our credit at this point. I just talked about all that shit. It sounded like a novella. And I'm six months in. I'm a baby in the credit space. I'm not even at a year, right? And so this is, again, optimized. If I could go whisper it into uh, the younger self of me, this is what I would be doing. Uh, and we haven't even run a business sequence yet. Like business funding, the shit you hear about, we're not even there. We will be, though. So now we're going to prep for the business funding sequences because our personal side is done. I'm leaving that personal alone. For, for those curious, that's basically what I have right now. I have like six personal primary cards and one pledge loan and i've been able to get to where i'm at almost 400k in funding i probably should be at a million if i wasn't like distracted and if i was just going funding crazy and like just trying to get hit a number to me i don't really need like too much i know that sounds like stupid to be like oh he's mr credit and he said you don't need like always get more credit da, da, da. yeah but i mean I'm, I'm just basically not trying to like get it right now because the zero percent apr could start taking it i don't need it but yeah, realistically, I could with the same credit profile that could sound like thin to some people who are trying to push like 21 accounts or whatever the magic number they try and push is. Um, it's not needed. So I'm living proof that you just need a lean and mean credit profile and bank relationships to go crazy on the business side multiple, multiple times. Because I have like 27 credit cards. I just only have six on the personal side. I just went hard on the business side. Um, so before your business sequence, Go ahead and basically rub shoulders on the business side with these banks. These are all pretty much nationwide. You can you basically have to switch a few out because of your region, like West Coast, East Coast, and then Central. They could have different access to different banks. But Chase is nationwide. B of A is nationwide. Sometimes they have a bonus. PNC, regional. So you could switch that out. Navy Federal would be nationwide, but not everybody can get in, obviously. But that's great because these are all bank accounts we're going to end up uh, using as a rubbing shoulders to go get funding, right? And then you could do one more mid-tier bank like Truist, Key Bank, or Regions at this point. But like four to five bank accounts at this point, you can go grab those just to start putting yourself on the map as a customer. And then you could also, at this point, credit side, I should have highlighted like this is the banking side and this is the credit side. At the bottom, remember, you, you can make extra points like per year, just referring the cards out. So like go in a free Facebook group, add a little value, just show your screenshots or your data points or whatever and be like, hey, I got approved for this like three months ago. Or this is my sequence. People will flip the fuck out because they don't know this shit, right? Not in this way. And they'll be like, yo, okay. And they'll ask you questions. Maybe you get some game back and forth, whatever. Just tell them what you did. This is what I did. I had this, this checking account for three months. Da, 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 da. You could literally, they'll be like, how can I repay you, bro? Like, this is crazy. This is sauce. You could use my referral link. When you go apply, oh yeah, bro, no doubt. You can max all these out. You can literally max your Sapphire Preferred, 75K points a year, just referrals. Amex Gold, 55, sometimes 100K points per year, just referrals. Blue Business Plus as well. Built, you can go up to 2 million if you refer enough people. And what's crazy is you don't even have to own the built card to refer people and make money. I've got like, I think over 200,000 points, uh, built points. And I don't even have the built card yet. I just know it's a great card. Like it is actually the one card that I would recommend to everybody because you can, you know, pay your rent with it. No fees. It's no annual fee. It's damn near the Sapphire preferred, like a baby version. Uh, so I could have a whole podcast on the built card if you guys want to check it out. But yeah, it's, it's actually a card. I'm not just shilling it. Like I literally advocate for it and I'm making money from advocating for it. It's a little affiliate marketing play kind of on accident, but um, yeah, you can make a lot of money with that one. But so bonuses here, I'll say 500 to 700 in bank bonuses here. That's probably very low, probably missing a few. And then referrals, that's cash value of 1,850. I'm rounding down super hard because I didn't even include built. Like, because I don't necessarily think everybody can hit up to the 2 million that they're offering for referrals, but I'm just completely leaving them out. That's up to 20,000 in value right there. If you get the full 2, 2 million, let's say you post a reel and you, you talk about 
the secret sign-up bonus that Built has you didn't know about. That shit goes viral. You put your link in your bio. People are just cranking that. You go up to 2 million in points. That is crazy off of just free shit. Some people get crafty and they they put their built referral link as a Google ad. And then they pop up when people type in built in the search description and they get free referrals. Like we're not free because they're paying a little bit for ad spend, but like they're profiting on paper. People get real crafty with it. Um, that's a whole rabbit hole, but moving on. So going into this business sequence, if you waited uh, six months after we just ran that crazy personal funding, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's the chat? Y'all still with me? I need ones because I know it's a lot. Let me scroll. Let me see ones. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I forgot to check in with y'all. I was just going. <laughs> cool. I like the ones. All right. All right. All right. And I'm not I, I like I went too hard. I'm not monitoring the chat simultaneously. So don't listen to any uh, fake gurus in the chat if they're over here trying to give any advice. I can't verify or vouch until the end, until we do Q&A. So, but I'm glad y'all still with me. I'm seeing I'm seeing the chat go crazy. So um, I'm putting my all into this thing. Danny, Vincent, uh, Lolita, Richard. What's good? What's good? Q. Andrea, what's good? Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's get back to it. So going into the business sequence. Remember, this is recorded, so just, just chill. It is a lot of info, though. So if you waited until six months after your personal sequence, that's what I'll consider a rushed approach because your average age at that point would be like under a year, a little under a year. It's going to be like 9.6 months, basically, like just your primaries. That's getting those six or seven accounts or no, six accounts that are a year old, your builders from the growth stage. And then like those four accounts that are about six months old from the personal sequence. Uh, I call it your starter sequence. That's kind of the, the phrase I coined. Um, you do have two primary revolving accounts that are a year old plus. You have the, the OG Navy security card you got and you got the OG Freedom Rise. Um, but I just would like to see that average age get to the 12 month or more mark because I've seen that be a differentiator of not necessarily denied or approved, but like a few thousand approvals versus like crazy. Banks love to see 12 months plus of history on your cards. So I would low-key wait until your average is 12 months or more. I would definitely involve some authorized users at this point. Probably not going to do much of a difference on the business side because they really look at your primaries, but um, it can help. But I want to see primary age, your accounts at average age of 12 months or more. If you can hold out, and I'm going to show you how, uh, that's what I would do. So I would wait three more months, basically. This is me doing crazy math for y'all just because I care like about all the details. I would wait three more months until you do your major business funding sequence. So that's nine months in total after your personal starter sequence. But you're welcome to prune and fine tune your personals and your, and your one business card that you have at this point to just keep up in those limits. And you're welcome to do the Amex spree at this point because you're six months in with Amex. You're going to hit crazy. Like you're going to be able to pull off that six card play. I'll show you right now. But in theory, we're keeping track of the credit limits here. Your credit limits at this point should be Sapphire Preferred from five to 10. Uh, Freedom Flex or the Freedom Rise from 2K to five. The Cash Rewards card from 10 to 18 because remember we can ask for up to eight. Built, eh, they're usually pissy, so I'll go five to seven. They didn't give you too much more, but it's whatever. Apple, I do see them go from five to 15 all the time, so that's great. Blue Business Plus, remember, 3X CLI rule, triple, so I can go from six to 18, and I did. I'm a living proof of that. I went from two to six, six to 18. Boom, boom, and I could probably go from 18 to 30 or whatever. That's not even triple. It's like double, but I don't like to go past 35 with Amex uh, unless I'm like confident in going through a financial review. Financial reviews normally should be avoided because you should really diversify your, your leverage, your available credit with different banks. Um, bank uh, Amex will get a little weird after the 35K available credit mark. And so if you guys don't know what a financial review is, with, with Amex, it's notorious and they, they'll ask for everything. Two years tax records, they want a literal access to your tax records. So you have to give them a certain form that gives them access to it bank statements, all, the, all crazy shit. And then it like locks your cards while you're doing it. And so it's basically like being audited. Like it's it's a pain. So um, I basically just like, I have all, I got like eight Amex cards and I've never been financially reviewed. I'll show you exactly what income I state and how I like stay low risk to the banks and stuff like that on the end, at the end. I'll just give it away. 
Um, but yeah, so I have an 18K limit uh, with the Blue Business Plus before. And then I got the seven other cards I have with them. You could, you could do exactly what I did and be fine, trust. Um, but this is a total of 75K in funding and 18,000 of it is already business side and it's already zero APR, right? You only got a few more months of zero APR in this case, but still. And then the Amex Spree, these are the rules. So we're going to go into, if you want, you don't have to, but we're going to go into the Amex Spree. You can do up to two preset limit cards. Remember, preset means it has a real limit. And then you can do up to four charge cards, which is, uh, you know, platinum, gold, plum, green. You could do those technically all at once. So those are separate rules. So you can do up to two every 90 days on preset cards. And you can do up to four every 90 days if they're charge cards. So I was like, shout out Dub Washington. He put me onto this as a next level play. He probably, he's not mad I'm giving it away right now, but uh, he definitely put me on to like the other side of, you know, credit card maxing back in the days, like two years ago. It's wild. Um, I was like, yeah, why not both? Shoot. So I tried it and two cards on Friday, two cards on Saturday, two cards on Sunday. I'll show you my exact uh, breakdown. Amex business cards, if you get them, which at this point you should be focusing only on the business side because you're already in Amex. They're not going to be a hard pull and they're not going to show in your credit report. So you could literally still garden for a few more months by tacking these on and being basically killing time, but also hitting bonuses and building leverage and like shit you would have done already. So like, this is crazy. This is going to keep you busy if we're trying to get to that, you know, waiting around Mark with our personal, this is wild. You could spend a whole six months or a year just like tackling this because you don't have to do all six cards in a weekend, right? But I did it for proof of concept just because um, it's kind of crazy looking back on it, but this is the order that I did it in. And I think these are the all-time high bonuses right now. And you could cherry pick this because remember, no hard pull, no credit report. Like you could just go grab one, leave all of them alone, hit the bonus, make sure it's secured. On the next one, grab it, hit the bonus. It could be three months in between each one of these cards. You don't have to spam it, but I just did just because, right? So yeah, 190,000 points here uh, with the business platinum. Also, I would say the business platinum is better than the personal platinum for many reasons. I can make a whole podcast about that, actually, but we will. Um, I just got to be surface level for the time being. I highlighted this one in green because this is probably the best one to get. If I had to pick one out of all of these, business gold for the high sign-up bonus and for the four X back categories on it. It's gas, restaurants, ad spend. So any ads, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, Instagram, TikTok, any of those, you can get four X back. So for business owners, that's huge. And then like a couple more um, shipping supplies and oh, apple.com. We have crazy spend opportunities when, when iPhones come out every year, people are maxing out their four X back. You can get up to 150,000 in spend. Um, that's a whole advanced thing, but I keep a bunch of these cards in my pocket for certain plays. So I know every year when the iPhones come out, I'm going crazy with that business goal because I'm getting 4X back. So I could resell them and break even and just pocket that 4X multiple, right? And then go use that on travel or go book a flight for somebody else and give them a, a deal. And I'm li basically liquidating my cards. Like there's so many, like I keep points like a piggy bank. Like right now I have like 700,000 uh, Amex points and I'm just kind of sitting on them because they don't expire and because I can, you know, I can do what I want with them. But yeah, so... Yeah, it might not make sense to hold all these cards for everybody. I, I remember I'm, I'm talking to the beginner as well as the advanced person here, but this one I say does make a lot of sense. Um, and then this one, so I did it in this order because I was like, highest priority is the business plat for me at that point because it was, it was a whole lot of reasons. But I was like, highest bonus, highest everything. Let me get it first. Then I went with the business because I was like, second highest priority. Then I put preset cards in the middle because I was like, if I put these at the end, Maybe I'll get approved, sure, but I'll probably have lower limits because they're like, hey, you just got four cards. You're probably going to get a couple thousand maybe, right? So I'm like, let me put them here and then look it. It's kind of descending too. So I went 10, boom. This one was 8.7. So I'm like, oh, and I'm putting the same income for all these cards every time. So I can tell they're getting less and less generous, right? So that's why I did it in order of priority. I cared about Hilton more than I cared about Marriott in this case because of the bonuses and stuff. And then I cared about the plum card more than I cared about the business green card. Business green, I wouldn't even necessarily get. I got it for the little bonus and I got it just to show that it can be done. Uh, the business plum card does make a lot of sense. Like for some people, it's got like 60 days, no interest, like revolving. Like it's like, that's its strength. Like it's uh, 
perk. So that can make sense to some business owners. But but yeah, I literally just did it in this in this order. But like I said, you don't have to do it in a weekend. Um, during those three months of extra wait time, you could do this. And if you want, I said, yeah, if you wait those three months for your actual business sequence to start, it's funny because it's not even, yeah, like this is not the actual sequence. Yo, just, just wait. Your inquiries at that point, if you waited those extra three months, it's going to be zero inquiries on Experian in the last six months. Three in the last 12, but the most six months is what we care about. Zero on Experian in the last six, zero on Equifax, zero on TransUnion. We look ready to go. We're locked and loaded. And we didn't have to file any FTC reports to remove any inquiries, which some people are not cool about. And that could make sense because you're not supposed to unless they're unauthorized inquiries. Uh, no inquiry wiping of any sort is needed to run the plays that I just spoke about to this point, right? If you're trying to be like slower and conservative about it. And then also, these are all sole prop friendly. You could grab each one of these cards. Like I said, sole prop, home-based business, no EIN, no LLC, just to get these bonuses and make profit. Um, yeah, you could have stayed the sole prop this entire time. So here's uh, those crazy bonuses I was talking about. This is the Blue Business Plus, 75K. 15K in 12 months. And then this was like the, the Blue Business Cash. So it's the cash back version of this card. Uh, and that's going to give you straight up 750. You could apply for both. So maybe if you're like, oh, you said I can get two preset limit cards. All right, I'm going to get both of these. And then boom, now you got two, uh, no annual fee, you know, pretty much like low hanging duck, like fruit uh, cards that are W's. Um, and you can hit both of these bonuses. It's totally fine. I wouldn't necessarily use both that. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that because they both have 0%. So I personally have not applied for the Blue Business Cash on purpose because I know whenever I do, that's going to be my zero APR like bullet that I can use, right? And then I can move my limits over and just dump all my limits on that card so I can get the most available 0%. zero percent. It's kind of advanced, but yeah. So let's run the actual business funding now. So this screenshot right here, man, I could... I actually went, I, I consider this screenshot to be kind of um, conservative. It's very funny to be using that term right now, but whew. all right. There's 283,000 in funding on this page right now. And that's light. Like we're talking light because I missed a bunch of shit here, but this is my round. Like this is actually my funding sequence on paper. Uh, this is what I did. But you can see the gaps as soon as you start to study it. Like, oh, he could have done this. He could have added one more card right here. Blah, blah, blah. But in theory, you could wipe your inquiries and then wait three months and run this and run this round because you can separate them by rounds, basically. So if this is about studying what card is going to pull what bureau and then setting up your order of operations. So look, my Experian round one, I prioritized Chase Inc. Unlimited because it's a low hanging fruit. I was already in Chase for that long. Boom, got it. Zero percent. Also cared about that. Navy Federal Business Card. I got it because it's a ghost card because I can liquidate that. And uh, ghost card means it doesn't show up on personal or business. And I got the business PayPal because I knew it was brand new and I wanted to just spearhead it. Like I remember I was up at midnight for that business PayPal card like a shoe, like it was some Jordans. I was like, yo, I applied. Let me see what happens. Like I was like, uh, I was just trying to gather data. And I was like, yeah, put my experience. I got 22,000, da, 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 da. Yeah, uh, that was a crazy, crazy time. But yeah, so that's my uh, round one on Experian. Still valid. Every one of these is still valid. They still pull that. And round one on TransUnion. I went with the business leverage at US Bank because I, I purposely went for the one that did not have 0% because I was like, I don't need the 0%. I just got this 25. Um, I got this 35K down here from Citizens I'll talk about. I was like, yeah, I'm going to actually just play the long game with U.S. Bank and show them I can handle, you know, a, a credit card in general with them. And then I'll go get the business 0% later. And so they actually ended up targeting me with a 0% offer. After I got this 19K, uh, they just gave me a balance transfer offer. It was like, do you want to have 0% for 12 months on this card? I was like, sure. So I literally ended up getting 0% on a card that wasn't. So that you can know that sometimes cards do that if you study um elan did the same thing i got the smart business card it's the one elan credit card that does not have zero percent same thing they offered me zero percent i was like let's go so yeah and then uh equifax i went with the city business advantage card that's the american airlines card partnered because i went with it because i wanted to earn aa miles and all that and get those perks 
I didn't care about 0% in this case or like having a high credit limit. So I only got 1500. It's at like 13,500 now because I credit limit increased it. But yeah, I was just happy to get that approval. Citizens Business, that was fire. It used to be no hard pull Equifax. Now it is a hard pull on Equifax. So I put it down here and I got 35K no docs from Citizens Bank. I could have also double dipped and got a B lock, um, but I wasn't trying to push it. So I was just happy to have no docs, 35K, 0% and starting my relationship with Citizens. Moving on, see how I like I missed, I could have added one more to TransUnion. I could have added one more to Equifax right there. Uh, an experience on round two, I could have added one more. I completely missed Equifax round two. Like the fucking caption put a, uh, took up the space. Like I could have had more is my point. Like I could have technically mapped this out even further. Um, so I realistically, I could have ran like a 500K sequence if I wanted to, right? But you got to have the spin to hit the bonuses and you got to not be freaked out about having access to that much 0%. Some people, you know, they go and do stupid shit because it's burning a hole in their pocket. They're like, what do I do? You don't need to. But yeah, chasing cash in this case, I would go through a business banker and get higher limits than this. Uh, that's the key. You can go through a business banker and get like 50K plus 50 to 100K usually. Um, so that's always better. Relationships matter. Going through a banker, don't get convinced, use anybody's chase plug, blah, 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 blah. It's a banker. He's not a magician. Go to any bank. You can accidentally find a business banker and tell them that you want to apply for some shit and go through him. And they'll let you do some extra stuff. Like basically you can remotely sign it. You don't have to be in the branch to sign it. Um, you can request an actual limit. Tell him like, hey, I want to try for 60K. And you can try for that instead of just praying and hoping that you get a high limit. Like it's a different process when you go through a banker. Um, also, usually less like verification issues because it's going through the banker and it's run more secure and stuff. So, so yeah, Um FNBO, that's region specific. So not everybody can get that one, but you can replace that with a bunch of other business credit cards. Don't get mad if I'm not giving you options right here because this is plenty of fucking options. Like you can move these and put them over here, whatever, whatever. There's, there's a lot more that you could do, but um, TransUnion round two, I went for Barclays because that got me um, just the approval so I can get Wyndham Diamond. And with that card, if you get Wyndham Diamond, it matches to Caesars Diamond. So that was a little bit of a travel hack. And now I have Caesars Diamond forever because I had that card. Plus it's building business credit. Plus it's building relationship with Barclays. So it was like a th three birds, one stone. Um, that's some like travel hacker stuff, right? But uh, Bank of America, I would put here. I don't actually have this one, but you could do two or even three business credit cards with Bank of America all at once. So you could double or triple dip, like we like to call it. And usually they'll be the same exact limit. So you can go, you can go on tabs or you can literally call and apply through a rep or, or in branch. Uh, it'll pull TransUnion just one time if you do it all same day. So you can get 10 plus 10 plus technically another 10. Uh, Cathay Bank, I would put it here. They're pulling TransUnion now. I did not apply for this one either, but I just put it in here for you guys as a data point. That's most likely going to be 10 to 15K, 0%. And that's also a ghost card. So that one's cool because it doesn't... A ghost card is something that doesn't build business credits because it doesn't show up on business credit. It also doesn't show up on your personal side. So it's completely in limbo. And sometimes we use those to our advantage because that's where I'd rather hold a balance versus if I'm putting a lot of 0% balances on at Chase, yeah, that's great. I'm not paying interest, but Chase is going to report that to Business Credit Bureau. So now it's not going to drop my personal credit score, but everybody on the business side can see it. So I would rather put my balances on ghost cards if I can, and then slowly dip into cards that are reporting if I need that much access to 0%. Uh, Experience round three, that's when I went for Chase Inc. Preferred. Inc. Preferred is harder to get. So that's why I wanted to make sure I had relationship with Chase that deeply before I went for this one. Crazy 100K sign-up bonus on that though. City business, oh yeah, I, I credit limit increased that city business from down here and it pulled Experian, which was a weird data point. So it pulled Equifax for the approval, but then it pulled Experian for the credit limit increase. So, you know, I wiped that. I was like, that's easy. Over the phone, take it out, boom. Uh, took off the Experian increase for that. Um, and it didn't affect the card, so the card stayed open. TransUnion round three. Um, I went for the Business Platinum. That was the one that was supposed to give you crazy 0%, 18 months. And they gave me a sorry little 3K, right? And my mistake was I just took the L. I was like, damn, oh, well. I should have called in and talked to a banker and bankers can actually push that card up before it even gets to your house. So what happened with my homegirl, Jaina, uh, shout out Jaina Ann, 
she had called her banker and she because she had also gotten a 3k approval that shit went from 3k to 25 no extra hard pull no nothing and it was just asking so she's like you know don't ask you don't receive i should have done that and so that's something good to note is that if you get hit with a small limit like that you can't merge limits together like you can at chase um if you're at us bank they'll laugh at you i try to ask i was like can i take the 819 that i have from this card and put it over there and they were like hell nah <laughs> you're tripping but they used to actually be able to do it so i was like you guys are stupid for making fun of me anyways um but you can just ask for more so that's what i would do in that case and then i would run the elan spree right here you could have ran an elan spree over here technically an elan spree is applying for multiple cards that are underwritten by elan elan financial but they're technically they could be even the same like product it's it's a weird uh it's a weird thing to explain to a beginner. So there's a couple companies out here that will let banks put their logo on a card, but it's actually them operating the underwriting in the back end. So like Elan can tell Mechanics Bank, that's one of like the hundred plus banks that are doing this method. Elan will be like, yo, Mechanics, you can go say that you have a whole lineup of cards and when they get approved, we just split some bread and then we'll handle it. Like we'll handle the underwriting and the lending. And these banks are cool with that because it's more simple. They can focus on better products like loans and other things. So there's a lot of banks that do that. So basically you can use that to your advantage because if you put this shit together, you can be like, yo, Mechanics does it. Comerica does it. Okay, boom. Um, What's another one? Spectra, they do it. Okay, so they're all technically the same product, but they're different institutions. So I'm going to go line that up and then spam, 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 apply for two or three at once and get basically the same approval like two or three times. That shit is crazy. I wouldn't go over two, really. Some people try to go four and that's when usually you get shut down because obviously they can see that they're lending to the same person, but they let it slide at like the two mark usually when you do two at once. Um, but I, I haven't, I don't recommend three or four. Um, but like, okay, I want to put this out just for the video also. You guys know those TikToks where they point up and then they're like five banks that can get you such and such funding, right? And then you kind of notice that they all look like they're the same homepage, but they're different names and different logos. That's the Elan play. So they're literally showing you the same Elan product, but at different banks. And then they're acting like they got access to five different banks. To da, 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 da. But that's what it is. So I can literally make reels for days off just that, right? Because there's hundreds of banks that are using Elan as the backbone. Um, that's just a little understanding for y'all. So don't think you can go apply for those hundreds of Elan banks because Elan will eventually stop you because on their books, you're the same person. It doesn't matter what logo you have on the card. Hopefully that makes sense. Because that, that is a little complex. Can I get ones in the chat right now before we move on from that? So white labeled business cards are a thing. White label. So white label uh, in the e-commerce space means, hey, we're going to make this bland product that's no name brand on it. And then you just got to slap your name on it and sell it like it's yours. Like I believe Kylie Jenner did when she did Kylie Cosmetics or whatever, right? She goes to a factory with a product that's already good, that's already high quality. She just goes, put Kylie on it and she makes a bill. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's white labeling. So these companies are doing that for banks. Like, damn, all I got to do is put my name on it. Boom, run it. So that's what's going on. Um, and yeah, so in this sequence right here, we left out regional banks because not everybody can get them. We left out most regional banks. Truist, Key Bank, Regions, that type of thing. We could easily add another 100K onto this page. Um, thanks for the ones, everybody, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll say uh, adding it up, $283,200 on this page, not adding the shit that we already got from previous funding. So, and it's not ran to the full extent. And this is all not like saying too crazy of an income. This is all PG. This is all no doc and not including the 93K from the last page or not including credit limit increases during the nine months of gardening that we did, which is, which is wild. So adding that together, that's 300,000 or $376,900 in funding. Half of that basically is 0% business credit for 12 to 18 months. And in total, you have 320000 in business credit not showing up on your personal that you could use. I'm a fan of getting a shit ton of business credit because then I only got to pick out a little bit and then my my I'm not actually over leveraged. Like I'm not like 
out of breathing room, right? If I, if I plan to use 20,000, I'd rather have 200,000 to then just pick off 20 and then only be dealing with like 10%. It's like bankroll, like it's like risk management, you know what I'm saying? So then if I need to, I can move balances around or I can move, I can stagger a 0% around so I can just keep, you know, putting that balance elsewhere. That's again, chess moves. I'm gonna keep saying it. So yeah, if you factor in, um, oh yeah, like, so Wells Fargo's business credit cards are out of commission right now. They're they're revamping their, their lineup, but there is a soft pull Wells Fargo play where you can walk into the branch and knowing that your personal credit is A1, walk into the branch, you make a business checking account in person. And if you're pre-qualified on the spot, because you can't leave the branch, you got to make sure it's on the spot when you, when you ask. If you're pre-qualified for a business credit card at that same time, it will be no hard pull and you don't have to do any funny business to actually do it. Um, you can just get no hard pull right there because it's the the day that you're opening your business checking account. It's just data points. We know that it happens. So that's cool. But yeah, regional banks, yeah, truest key bank regions, easily over 350 um, if you max them out. So it's actually wild. What else you could do? And there's too many sign-up bonuses to count from all that funding. But like the four cards that I would say, like all three chase cards, these are their bonuses, 90, 90, and 100. That's 280K points and bonuses. 200, that's $2,800 minimum in cash uh, value, but again, triple for travel. And then AA, I would say also 650 minimum if you hit that. We already earned $4,400 from bonuses prior. So we're talking bare minimum $7,400 cash value, like in the, in the sign up bonuses that I just talked about. Super, super conservative. Like it hurts to be this like bare bones about everything that you could do. But yeah, so now I'm going to show you guys the data points after we get some ones in the chat. Um, and then you guys will just be able to literally plug and play. Should be cool. Should be pissing some funding people off, to be honest. And then we're going to give that free gift away. So I think it's a gift. I think it's a free, uh, a pretty cool free thing to do. Okay, so this is my profile before going for that funding. I had a FICO 790, so FICO 8 score. That's what all the banks are going to pull. So don't worry about Vantage score. Don't worry about um, any other FICO score, really. I'll say for general like purposes, just being broad about it, um, use FICO 8 score models to, to check your score. Score doesn't matter. That's a whole other thing I could talk about. But um, that was what it was. It was about 800 club. Usually after you're like 720, 750 plus, the score doesn't matter. You're not going to get denied for being a point up or down, right? It's just kind of an indicator. And I've done a whole whole talks on score versus uh, report. But this is my report underneath, like popping the hood. I had a $3,500 cap one, three years old. I had a 5K Discover, 7,800 uh, Freedom Flex, 10K Sapphire Reserve, 15K Apple at the time. And then I have my Amex Gold. And here's the age on all of them. So if you can kind of mimic my profile at the time, you could most likely get similar results, probably better because of how you run things and, and, and all that. I had a 10K pledge loan. And it was funny because the 10K pledge loan was about one, two, or three months old at the time of me applying for stuff. And I was scared because I was like, I needed to get that to establish credit mix. But I was like, that's a brand new account. Is that going to mess up my funding because it's so new? I actually saw like a 35 point boost on my credit when I added the pledge loan. So I knew it was doing something major to involve that credit mix. So if you had only credit cards and no installment account, I would add at least one installment account. And it's going to help you more than it hurts you, right? So yes, it's going to be a brand new account, but look at the results I got. I, and I was being pretty like not knowing what I was doing. You could, you could realistically still get great funding results if that's like what you need to do. I would absolutely not run business funding until I had some credit mix. So look at it being almost brand new, still got those results. And then I did have two AUs. There are about 15K each on the limits. There are like no balance and they're like four years old each from uh, my parents. But my average age of primaries was a year and a half on its own. So I had like an average age of three or four years, I think. But I was like including the AUs, but I'm trying to like move that to the side and be like, look at my actual primaries. Everything was a year plus, except for this one. This was nine months, but my average, you know, was a year, two years and three years. But yeah, uh, let's see. LLC info. A lot of people have questions about these and they get hidden. So you can screenshot this too. My industry code that I use for my LLC 
541-613 Marketing Consulting. Uh, I always put president instead of owner or instead of manager or instead of anything else. It's safer. And then my gross revenue was 250 in most places. And then my net income was 150. At more conservative banks, I would usually go 150 gross revenue and 80K net possibly. Also, they they um, will factor your income in different ways. So some will say household income, some will say projected uh, income, some will say estimated income, a bunch of different fine print that you might need to watch for, right? And some are more like conservative on like when they'll issue a financial review. So with Amex, I wouldn't even recommend doing this. I said 250K revenue and then I put 72K net. I would keep the 72K net, like around 70 is where I would stop with maybe if I'm trying to avoid financial reviews. But I'll probably say something like 150 or even 100 for business revenue, uh, being more conservative rather than um, generous with them. Because think about it. I got all my shit with 72K net, which is really what they care about. Like, what's your net take home um, personal? And so, yeah, uh, I'll, and, I've, and I've had students and clients and stuff round down to those numbers, like the 150 revenue and the and 72K net. And sometimes they get even better results because their profile is like more optimized than mine was. But but yeah, um, we, we usually talk about having a pretty conservative angle with Amex. Uh, I know there's uh, questions. Like I see Steph say, why not Wyoming? I know there's probably going to be a bunch of questions. We'll have a Q&A section at the end. But uh, yeah, so Wyoming, no, because uh, let me see. Well, Florida, actually, I was planning to move there. Plus, Florida has no state taxes. So I was like, OK, that's, that's simple. That's great. I actually messed up. I'm located in California. I, I tell everybody now you're supposed to file your LLC in the state that you live in for because it makes things way easier. And then you can always file a foreign entity elsewhere related to your LLC. But it's kind of like a visa, like it's kind of like a I'm authorized to be over here for a little bit. And you can go get funding that way and access banks that are more region specific that way. So your domestic LLC should be in the place that you live. And then your foreign entity should be elsewhere. Uh, California people watch out for that because California is the one state that charges a ton just to exist. It's like $800 a year. I talked about that. That sucks. And that in that case, I'm like, sometimes I'm just like, go the soul prop route because bro, that is almost not worth it. It sucks, but that's just what California people got to deal with. But remember, that's kind of one of the things that tipped me on like the soul prop funding is like, you can get a lot of this funding as a sole proprietor. It's not going to stop you. And it's also sometimes potentially even better because a sole prop wouldn't even have like, well, it could be a pro or a con depending on your plans, but sole prop wouldn't have business credit because you're doing it as a sole prop. It's not a, a LLC type entity. It's yeah, it's crazy. It could be better. But yeah, um, I said three to four years in business, even though my LLC was uh, from October 29, 2021. It was only three months old at the time of me getting funded, but I had no problems uh, saying this on paper. And my whole explanation, if any bank were to ever ask, which only one did, it was Citizens. Um, I would always say I've been a sole prop for three or four years. Only recently did I just get this LLC. So I stopped using my old sole prop EIN. I stopped using my sole prop business checking accounts. Don't even have access to them no more. I explained it. And when citizens called me, because they always call, um, they're a more intimate bank. They were like, hey, we noticed a few things. We just want to clarify. They, they clarified my revenue. They clarified my net income. And then they clarified that. And they were like, just want to make sure um, that's what you meant to put. And I was like, yeah, no. So I explained it to them. It's like, had a sole prop for a while. I just, you know, recently changed entities. So I wanted to give you guys the most recent data. And they're like, oh, that, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you for that. And then I got the no doc approval. So that's what I did. Um, employees, if there if there's a button or a range, you can do one to five. It's not going to hurt you. Um, that's totally fine. But yeah, uh, like I said, I don't recommend doing that. The whole, like me not being in the state that I got the LLC from. That was, uh, that was actually some some guru talk that I was listening to. I also got the Opus and was paying $100 a month for no reason on an address that didn't make sense. Ended up shooting me in the foot. I cannot put these people on blast because I don't want to get sued. But a lot of people saying a lot of dumb shit out here. Right. Well, keep it moving. Again, I want to wrap up with this before we go into the Q&As and stuff. There's still a few more slides, but um, credit is not evil. Remember how I said in the beginning, leave with this. It, you might not know exactly what to do right now, but you might have seen information you never would have freaking seen and maybe seen at least one go through of a roadmap in a, uh, to an opportunity that you've never been able to see. So just remember, you need proper training and there is ways to save and make thousands using credit to your advantage. The credit timeline that I would tell my younger self, because remember, that's the avatar I'm trying to talk to. 
I wish I could I wish I could go back in time, right? I would have saved a lot of time and effort and mistakes. But this is probably what I would do. And this is is it's involving credit, but it's it's going a little more on like you as a person and you in life. So contrary to what you'll see from a lot of gurus and entrepreneurs content, step one is keep your day job and work towards saving six months. I would say three to six months of living expenses, cash. It's going to be so damn slow to get to that point because you're still working at like time for money type stuff. And it almost is not even going to matter in terms of like, like, let's say you just turn up and start making hella money later. You could be like, damn, it took me six months to save up, you know, 10K. And then all of a sudden I start making 10, 20, 30K a month. You're like, damn, like that was almost pointless. But it does more for you mentally than anything when you're in that mode because you're just breaking out of survival mode. Right. So that nest egg lets you work out of a place of stability and abundance instead of like, I got to make this quick cash like because I just quit my job and I'm trying to keep the lights on it. And then you end up just literally, I'm telling you, it clouds your vision. So it does more for you for peace of mind than anything. And then at this time, when you're keeping your day job and you're trying to stack the savings, right? To have that mental clarity, you're building your credit the right way because you have time and you have stability, right? And you should be learning skills and stuff from your job as well. But you should also be, I, I put that in the wrong order. You should also be a sponge. Like you should be looking at what skills can I adopt? Like what's some ways online to make money uh, all from the, I'm still at my job and I'm trying to just multitask. And after my job, poke at this information. What's this over here? What's this? What's that? That was my journey. I literally, and Nico, I'll see you in the chat. Nico can attest. He's been with me since I was literally like 16, 17, uh, watching me, see me go from full-time one man band videographer, not knowing what I was doing, not knowing anything about business or credit or anything to quitting my my videographer career at the peak of it when I was working with celebrities and rappers and shit to go be a sponge. And I literally moved to a place that nobody could touch me, which was Hawaii at the time, because it was actually like, it was a crazy series of events, but I moved as far away from everybody as I could and was just like, I'm gonna go be a sponge for a year. I'm gonna go do my Rocky phase. Like I'm gonna do the montage and just take a whole year for it. Cause I'm like, there's so much that I don't know that I don't know. And this credit shit, I'm like, it's going to take a while. So I can build this up like an asset, basically get all this access to funding. In a year, I was like, I'm going to know what I need to do and I'm going to go execute. So I just didn't. And I kept a, a stable income coming in as I was experimenting. And I dropped my expenses like super low. I tried. And uh, that's what I ended up doing. So I worked Uber and DoorDash for a year straight. For those of y'all that know my stories, I I'm, I'm literally was working seven days a week, 10 hour days, headphones in, delivering food listening to audiobooks, YouTube, podcasts, trying to figure out shit that I would have never came in contact with, trying to stumble upon some shit. One of the things I stumbled upon was credit. And I started working at that and posting about it and doing free content and trying to deliver the value that I was learning as I was doing it. And so that was phase one. Um, I would say everybody should do that. It, it would work out best than rather than trying to like YOLO into some shit with your, with your business credit, which is, is debt, obviously. Um, you can't swing and miss at that. You want to you want to fail small, fail fast, and just try shit. That's why you got to be a mad scientist. I got that from Ty Lopez. So credit to him for pointing the mad scientist thing. Phase two would be treat your credit right as it grows while you develop a skill and work on providing value to a certain audience with it. That could be clients, or that could be if you're actually into like posting online and being a personal brand or doing any type of thing. It could be faceless, right? Um, it could be an audience, or it could be clients in real life, or both. And then get the cash flow from the skill that you're trying. Remember, a skill is only going to cost your time and learning curves. It's not going to cost money. Most people want to throw money in some place and they're not gaining any skills. If you throw 100K, especially in debt, into a stock market and the stock crashes, you don't have anything to take from that experience. You just have money going up and down on paper and you're not a better person from the experience. Besides, I know not to do that again. Literally, that's all you can take from it. So... If you're building a skill, let's say I spend $1,000 on a course, I learn a little bit, I take that with me for the rest of my life. If I take a videography course, now I know how to do videos and edit and the learning curve is done because I put that into myself. And now maybe I didn't end up going the videographer path, but I had that skill on my belt that I paid for in time and a little bit of cash. And now I can go use that videographer skill on some other lane. It ends up being part of the arsenal that you have. Um, so I'm, I'm big on investing into skills and investing with your time, not, not necessarily dollars, but yes, uh, phase three, you'd be ready to run your first personal sequence by now, which we explained. 
and then garden for six months. At that point, you can start getting your LLC ready if, you, if that's what you're going to end up doing and then going to get your business funding at phase four. So this is kind of like the grow, the grow tree go stage, but with life attached. Like this is life included, you know, and a little bit more uh, explained. But taking those savings, this is like the, we can try at small scale. You would take those savings from phase one and the zero APR funding that you have now. And then that skill that you've been building and devote more time to that product or service skill, right? Then you can bet on yourself, I would say, especially if you're young, you can bet. Remember, this is different for everybody's situation. But if I was talking to 19 year old me, that take that skill, take that credit, take those low expenses, bet on yourself for 90 days with that skill. Like, what's the worst that could happen? You have those six months, three to six months of savings. Your your life expenses shouldn't be more than a couple of grand, two, three or four thousand a month. Really shouldn't be at that four mark, honestly. Try for 90 days. Try to make more money at that skill than your job if you're really trying to do the entrepreneur thing. If it works, great. If not, back to the drawing board. You use the savings to pay off the, the swing and the miss and you learn so much from it. You, you try to do it on your own. You learn what you could. You're going to apply it to the next thing you try, right? But you're you're failing small. I'm big on like I'm big on that. Um, oh, shoot. I dropped it in the wrong order. Okay, hold on. So this is the free thing that I'm announcing and it's going to come with free calls and a free chat and a free Q&A area and all kinds. Of, and I'm going to have a gamification area so people can get on free one-on-ones with me. We're going to do a free live event, uh, free mini courses, free cheat sheets. It's going to be in fucking sane. I'm going to have to blur, blur, blur this out a lot for YouTube if I end up posting it. But um, that's the announcement, you guys. Going into 2024, we're not going nowhere. And I also understand that this info is only so valuable on its own. More than the information, bro, you need the implementation and you need the environment. And that's the light bulb moment for me that, that happened this year, especially later this year, and especially after running a, a group, you need the environment. And so I've been studying like, where do I want to have this environment be? And I know I need to take the leadership position in it because I've seen me be able to like breathe life into a group of people and that end up being what keeps them on their toes and keeps them involved and keeps them getting wins. And then that snowball effect where the group starts being able to serve itself. And then, you know, it's like life changing shit. Me and Nico were just talking about the mentorship that I had dropped, which I'm not, I'm not pitching right now. It's closed. But a year from today, almost like we were, we had just started it. And I was like, damn, where we all ended up going after a year of being tapped into each other was insane like it, it was actually mind-blowing so i'm about to do that for the free so what you guys can do because the automation is set up and then hopefully most of you guys are multitasking you're on you're on your laptop and you're on um your phone you should be able to dm me school in all caps on instagram and i will have a whole automation set up because remember it's not really me um but it should be able to work where it's going to send you, it's going to ask for your email and then it's going to send you the school link. And so the reason I'm asking for the email is because I I set up a, a an automation to where the email gets loaded into school and then you, you bypass that you can immediately join. And so this will be able to, this will be a way to be able to onboard a ton of people at once, hopefully successfully with no problems. Let me know if it goes well. Let me know if you've seen the, the messages back and forth and stuff. Because it should ask for your email. It should ask you to join. Uh, it should give you the link. Let me see. Uh, this is the first time trying an automation of anything. So, And then it sh I should like be able to not have to click um, like pending. Like You guys should just be able to immediately pop in. So let me see. I think I've seen the member go up. Let me see who's the first person to join. Uh, we got Darrell. We got Darius. We got Berhan. Ahmed. Um, and there's a, there's a whole, like, I want to do better onboarding for you guys, but there's a, a zoom calendar that you'll be able to keep track of. And like, we'll put topics of exactly what's going to be talked about on what days. Um, and yeah, we're going to put those in the group. And so this free call is going to be recorded and it's going to be put inside the group as a mini course. So you guys can actually watch it or a little masterclass. You know what I'm saying? So after you join, after you DM school and go through the email thing and, and all that, I would recommend getting the mobile app for school because it has its own dedicated mobile app. Having that mental decision of going on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok and going on school, that should be what helps you mentally separate like, okay, I'm going to learn. Like I'm going to fucking school, no pun intended. 
instead of I'm going to go get distracted, you know, on these on these apps. So that's why I'm making the migration. That's why I'm because I'm I feel like we really need to have a dedicated area where everything's curated. And so if you trust me, you know, obviously curating the community, then this is where we're going to be. So there's a post actually in the school group. Um, it says start here. And that'll be direct links for Android and Apple to be able to download school. And you can put that on your home screen and check in on that. You'll have push notifications. You can mute and unmute things as you want. But real simple, we have three channels in there right now. We're barely starting it. We have the announcements channel, which will be just from me. We got a general channel where everybody can talk about stuff and we'll talk about you know what we're going to put in there. And then a wins channel from actually using the information that we talk about and executing on it and then sharing it with the group, right? So in the general discussion tab right now, you can post topics that you want covered. I have an actual post that says, post your comment uh, or post your topics below, right? And everybody will be able to go in there, comment what you want. People can upvote it. People can say, yeah, that would be great. Can you also, you know, elaborate on this? Da, da, da. You guys are going to be literally the fuel to the content that comes into the free group because I'm going to be basically ears to the streets with this shit. So, and then the wins will be great because people can actually be like, oh shit, they can get basically, uh, you know, kicked into gear by being like, oh, that's right. Like, okay, I could go credit, let me increase that and go get a quick win there. Like so much, it's just so much info that it's, it's sometimes nice to see that other people are doing it because you remember that it's possible and you remember there's things you can be doing.